such a special way and yes I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise that's why my heart is filled in his holy temple let all the earth keep silent before him as we come to you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we welcome you into this house of worship we welcome you oh God into, as you listen to us whatever device you listen to us today we pray the blessing of the Lord will be upon you at this time our scripture and open prayer will be done by one of our associate ministers, Reverend Hodges. Good morning. I will be reading Isaiah, first chapter, starting at the 18th verse. And it reads, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scholars, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. But if, hmm, that's a strong word, but if, you resist and rebel. You will be devoured like the sword, by the sword. For the Lord, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Father God, we come in your presence this morning. But Father, we come leaning on your everlasting arm. We come, God, knowing that you have all power. Matter of fact, you are power all power. And God, we just thank you this morning for waking us up to see another beautiful day. Even though, God, somebody's laying on their bed of affliction this morning, you've allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer, and we want to say thank you. Realizing, God, you didn't have to do it, but you did it, and we just want to give you the glory, the honor, and we want to worship you today. We asking that your Holy Spirit, God, the power of the Spirit will hit this place today. That somebody's life will be changed. Somebody will be saved. Somebody will be set free. And no doubt, Father, somebody came in hurting this morning. Somebody came in this day of Christ. We're praying, Father, that we as believers, we begin to stand on your word. Even though sometimes we have to stand alone, God. Help us to understand if we stand, everything will be all right. God, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for our pastor, his wife, and his family. God, we are pray praying for a blessing upon that family. God, we're praying, Father, that you would just touch them this morning. You would give them peace, God. We thank you, God, for all of the things that you've done. And now, God, we're praying that you would just hold us in the hollow of your hand. And we, we, I got to say this about prayer. Satan, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We're seeing many things that you have tried to do. We've seen so many things that you have stolen. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are going and we're taking back everything you've stolen from us. Our families, our children, our husband, our wife, you've stolen it from us. But we're taking it back right now. We denounce you in the name of Jesus. You have no authority. You have no power. Even though the politician, you, 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 you have power over them, but you have no power. You have no power over us. So we denounce you right now. We denounce you in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We love you and we give you glory and honor. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, Second Providence, and 
to all of those who have tuned in to worship with us on this Lord's day. We give the Lord glory, we give him honor, we give him praise that we can stand here today and just lift up his name knowing that he is worthy to be lifted up. Now to our announcement. Today is a solemn day. 21 years ago. Something happened in New York, Washington. Lives were lost. 2,977 lives by the hands of 19 men who hijacked planes. And today, we honor those whose lives were lost, and to the families who lost loved ones, we lift them up today because they too are going through struggles. They're going through a hard time as they remember what happened to their loved ones. We remember one hundred and eighty four lives were lost at the Pentagon. Three hundred and forty three firefighters lost their lives. Two thousand seven hundred and fifty three lives were lost at the World Trade Center. 37 lives were lost, and those lives were Port Authority officers. In Shanksville, Pennsylvania, 40 lives were lost. The NYPD, there were 23 lives lost. I don't know about you, but I know exactly where I was on that morning. I can remember calling my husband and asking him because I knew that he has relatives in that area. I said, where is your nephew? Does he work in that area? And he said, no. It brought me some relief, but I still can feel for those who had loved ones that went home that day, went to work to do their job, but they never came back home. I can't imagine what it was like and what they went through on that awful morning of September 11th, 21 years ago. It actually seemed like it was just myself. I am a grandparent and I'm a proud grandparent. And I think all grandparents should be proud. Now, as we continue with our announcement, let us continue to pray for those that are sick and shut in. And we also pray for Leroy and Della Allen, as if you know, Leroy's mother passed away on yesterday. And we're asking that you keep that family in your prayers, and we will let you know on Monday evening, September the 19th at 7.30 p.m. at the First Baptist Church of North Augusta. A reminder that our Bible fall Bible study will begin on September the 21st on Zoom. And the women Bible study will be the bait of Satan, living free from the daily traps of offense by John Revere. Then the group Bible study will be Romans, the letter that changed the world. 
Also, the Angel Tree Committee will meet virtually on Thursday, September the 15th, 2022, at 7 o'clock p.m. All committee members and members who would like to work in the ministry are encouraged to attend. Please send a text message or call Terry Whetstone for the meeting link. Also, the Singer Sisterhood meeting for today has been canceled, and our plan your planning meeting has been rescheduled for October the 2nd, 2022. And we're asking that you please check your emails. Also, we will now move to our order of service. Our pre-recorded selection for today is Do Not Pass Me By by the Melissa James Choir, then the giving of the Lord's tithes and offering by Pastor James, then our offertory of prayer by Minister Sandra Mayweather, our associate minister, our solo for today, Lord, I'm Available to You by Mr. Cameron Grant Harding. Our message for today is an invitational warning from the Lord by Pastor James. Then we'll have our call to discipleship and our benediction. Our thoughts for the week. When we refuse to warn people that their action and their consequences have eternal consequences, we are not doing them any favors. Have a blessed week.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Do not pass me by. Thank God for our youth. And our Melissa James Choir, who knows how to sing, love to sing. It is given time. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Each one must do just as he or she purpose in his or her own heart. Not grudgingly or under compulsion, but God loves a cheerful giver. Each one should give as you have decided in your heart to give. You should not be sad when you give. And you, you should not give because you feel forced to give. The invitation is yours. God does not want what you have if you're forced to give it. If you give because we ask you to give, God doesn't want it. It does you no good, not of God. But God loves you when you give it from your heart. We should lay aside each week that what we're going to give back to the Lord. And we thank God for the givers. So you have an opportunity to give each every week through our post office box. 6685 North Augusta, South Carolina. You can go online and give to secondprovidence.com. Then you can track your giving through your computer. Or you can use your smartphone and text to give 73256. Follow the prompt and it will go directly into our account. Or you can bring it to the church. Or you can do whatever way you decide in your heart to give. We thank God for you. If you give sparingly, you should reach also sparingly. But if you give bountifully, you should reap also bountifully. And this time, another one of our associate ministers, Minister Mayweather, will pray for our givers. Minister Mayweather. Good morning, people of God. This is an opportunity for everybody to participate in the service. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you, first of all, for the opportunity and the honor and the privilege to give back to you what you have already given to us, oh God. Father God, we just so thankful for the resources that you have given us, Father God, that we can pour back into the ministry, oh God. That this is good soil, fertile ground, oh God. And we just thank you, God. That you said today is our opportunity for us to give back, oh God. We give back not just out of obedience, oh God, but out of love unto you, oh God. And so we're thankful, God. We're so thankful, God, that what we build in your house, Father God, you will build in ours, oh God. And so we're thankful right now in the name of Jesus for the opportunity to build in yet this house, God. Your house, God. So we're so thankful, Father God. Father God, right now we are speaking it, oh God, that we are above and not beneath, that we are the head and not the tail, that we are the lender and not the borrower, oh God, that we're walking in the overflow, oh God, that there will be an increase, oh God, in our territory, oh God, because of our obedience unto you, oh God. Father God, we ask you to bless these tithes and these offerings, oh God, that they will be used for the uplifting of your kingdom, oh God, to do the missionary work that it was called to do, oh God. And Father God, that we are speaking death cancellation right now, oh God, over every stronghold of finances, oh God. That Father God, that we are going to be good stewards, oh God, over the resources that you have given us. So God, we thank you. We honor you and we give you all the praise and the glory for you are worthy. For it's in Jesus' name, let us all say amen and amen.
Give me my hands to reach out to man, to show him your love and your perfect plans. You gave me my ears. I can hear your voice so clear. I can hear the cries of sinners, but can I wipe away their tears? You gave me my voice to sing your words, to sing all your praises to those who never heard, but with my eyes I see your need. For oh, more availability, I can see hearts that have been broken, so many people to be free. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Use me, Lord. To show someone the way hey, and enable me to stay. My storage is empty and I am available to you. Lord, oh Lord, my storage and I'm available to you, Lord, Lord. I hear the cries of sinners, so let me wipe away their tears. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to stay. My storage is empty, and I am available to you. Mm. My storage is empty, and I am available to you. My storage is empty. And I am available to you. Oh, thank you very much, camera. I'm available to you. Amen. I wonder how many people are available to God for them, to God to use them today. Amen. Come on, no, no, don't fool me now. Are you available to, for God to use you today? God wants us to be available to him. Thank God for the solo and thank God for you, brother. Good job. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank God for our musicians and Certainly, we appreciate them so very much and how they have worked hard and diligent with the music ministry at this church. And the camera is a product. Amen. And certainly, we thank God for our officers, our members, and our friends. And, and certainly, we thank God for our sound technician and those of you who make it available for uh, to get the word out of God, out to God all, each and every Sunday morning. And we thank you for God for this wonderful, beautiful audience today. Amen. You show that you are available to God. Thank God for all of those who have already participated on the program this morning. We appreciate you, Reverend Hodges. Thank you so much. We now strip you and do not open the prayer. My lovely wife for, uh, for doing our announcements and also bringing to us and reminding us what happened 21 years ago. Thank you so very much, uh, Minister Mayweather. Amen. Who preached last Sunday? A very powerful message. We thank God that we actually do. Amen. It was a powerful word. Your giant will fall. 
Amen. You just have to keep the faith. Amen. Your giant will fall. She said, your giant will fall. And okay, don't. And she's talking about the small assignment. It may be small, but no matter what it is, so don't you despise them, the small thing God has you to do. Because your giant will fall if you're willing and obedient unto God. And then she also told her, don't you allow the negativity, the negative things. And people are going to say some stuff and that you might not like it, but, but you get to keep the faith that your giant will fall. Amen? Amen. Don't you allow the negativity to stop, to stop you from doing the will of God. Amen. And then she said, don't forget the victory, the past victory. Amen. Amen. Things may not be going the way you wanted to go right now, but think about what God has done for you in the past. Amen. Think about what God has done. Think about how God has brought you through some stuff. Amen. She said, man, that woman preached last Sunday. Amen. Thank you so very much. We appreciate you, darling. Amen. And so, see, some folks are still stewing over stuff that they done happened many years ago. You got to let that stuff go. Amen. And some people don't like what you're doing, amen. And they're just trying to rob you of your blessing. So you got to let that stuff go, amen. You got to get rid of it, amen. Amen. She told us that David didn't, didn't want us to, he didn't let those brothers and nobody else stop him. But he remembered what God has done for him when the bear came against him and the lion, <clears throat> amen. He told he know how God delivered him from those things. And God has delivered you from some stuff. Amen? God has delivered you from stuff, so you're going to have to remember and go back and remember the things that God has done for you. Amen? Not for nobody else. Stop looking at what other folks are saying. You got to look into what God has done for you and through your life, and then give God the praise, give God the honor, and give God all the glory, because God will do it again. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Your giant will fall. It'll fall, but you got to keep your eyes on the sparrow. If God watches over the sparrow, don't you know he watches over you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God, you fired us up. You fired me up, sister. Thank God. And I told y'all, we gonna, my wife's going to take the vacation one day, amen? Amen, but I don't, I don't want you to take no vacation. Amen, we're going to take a vacation one day, but I don't want you to take no vacation. And this church is in good hands when I'm gone, because we got some great associate ministers here at this church, amen? The wonderful associate ministers, great musicians, and, and we thank you so much, brother. Here, thank you, boy, Amen? And thank you for going with us down to Reverend Spry's church, you know. We have many men in our associate minister now pastoring. Amen. We many of them are pastoring. They have their own church. And uh, we installed them into the church. They, they came out under obedience. An obedience to us. Amen. They wait on God to put them into a place. Amen. When God puts you somewhere, then it's going to last. Amen? It will last. And we thank God for them. Amen. Now to the word of God for today. Amen. The word of God for today. Thank you, Reverend Hodges. Good job. Thank God for the choir that sung. I mean, uh, the deacons and the mayor, of course. I tell you what, Deacon Tim got loose down there. Amen? That boy got loose under there. I mean, the fire was burning. Amen. The choir as well. And Marina, thank you so much. And we knew you had some little issues last week, but we got good to see you today. Amen. You're going to sing something today, too, aren't you? <laughs> You're going to sing something today before we leave here, too. Right? It'll it, it, it get you up. It'll get you up. Amen. Thank you so much, Deacon Hudson, for your lovely voice. That man, man you know he can sing, boy. Amen. So y'all need to be here early. See, see, amen. We have some, we have service before you go on air, so y'all miss some things. Amen. So we're not going to give you all of it, but we're going to give you some of it. Amen. Praise the Lord. The scripture is short for today, but the message is powerful. 
Let's look at verse 18. Words of God. Say, come now. Come now. Not tomorrow. Not until you get things worked out. Not until you retire. Not until you get some stuff paid for. Not until you get yourself together. Not until you get old. Because when you get old, you might not be able to come. He said, let us reason together. He said, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. I titled this word of God for the day an invitation or warning from the Lord. An invitation, a warning from the Lord. Somebody said, why the warning is it that? But you will see that at the end, in verse 20, you see the warning there. God spoke through the prophet Isaiah in the message for today. Now, the first thing we must know about prophets is that their message focuses on the present as well as the future. They foretell, they tell forth the word of God as well as foretell the words of God. The prophets are like everything off. The prophets are like Doctors. Watch this now. I said the prophets are like doctors. Now think about your medical doctor. They diagnose the case. They, they diagnose the case. They prescribe the remedy. And they warn the people what will happen if the prescription is ignored. Hmm? Isaiah is presenting us today with an invitational warning from the Lord just as it was in the days of Isaiah's message to God's people. When the prophet declares a vision of the future, they do it to encourage the people to obey God's command. I want you to understand that. They do it to, uh, to encourage the people. Today, we want to encourage you to obey God's command. Isaiah did not stop with the diagnosis, but also he gave the prescription because he wanted Judah to be restored back to God's righteousness. Hallelujah. God gives an invitation in the text, inviting his people to come and reason with him regardless of their sins. Some folks feel that they have messed up and they have done too much wrong and their lives are so messed up until they cannot come back into the fellowship of God. Some folks will see how you have messed up in, in, in your life and then they, they feel that, that they cannot face the congregation anymore. And they cannot face the church, but I want you to understand that's not so with God. You can never mess up too bad in order to come back to God and allow God to work things out for you. An invitation to reason together. That's point number one. An invitation to read together. God invites us to reason together with him because he is ready to show favor on us. 
He's ready to forgive us. He's ready to forgive all the stuff that you have done wrong. So stop letting people dictate who you are because God has already announced who you are. You are a child of the king. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are somebody in Christ Jesus. So stop allowing negative people to take who you are because you are not that. I don't care how many times you have stepped off the, the stage of do nothing and how many times you have done and messed up in this life, but God always cleaned up your mess. God wants the body of Christ to, to reason together with him. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so he can lift you up. You draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. I know the devil don't want you to do it, but you got to step on the devil. You got to keep marching because the longer you keep marching towards God, the devil will get out of your way. Love. And come closer to God. God is willing to forgive us of all our sins. Paul said, For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. See, see some folks think that they're better than others. The Jews thought that they were better than the Gentiles. There are certain race of people that they think they're better than other race of people. There are certain class of people that think that they're better than other class of people. But I want you to understand there is no difference between your race and other race and your class and other class in God's sight. He said the same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses. Glory to God. All who call on him. It doesn't matter what who you are, what you look like, where you've been, and where you're going. God blesses all people. For everyone who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And you cannot lose it. God offers us the same forgiveness. God does not deny our sinfulness. Instead, he forgives us on the payment for our sin through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. So stop putting him back on the cross. Stop begging and pleading for God and just thank God for what he has done for you. God grace and God power can make blood stain as white as snow. Glory to God. Did y'all hear that? I said God grace and God power can make blood stain as white as snow. Nothing can wash away our sin but the blood of Jesus. The blood that Jesus shed back on Calvary's cross. Wash it away the God's guilt to stand. So come. It's an invitation to come. And reason together. He wants to reason with you. God wants you to come to him. Point number two. An invitation. To God's righteousness. An invitation to God's righteousness. Paul speaks of God's righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ. For all have sinned. So don't look at my sin. Don't look at somebody else's sin. Other words, don't look at the beam in my eye. When you got a big old plank in your own eyes. The scripture all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
but being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God reveals to people how they should live, but no one can live uh, up to God's perfect plan. Those who believe are justified and declare righteous without cause. Uh, you hear what I'm saying? I said those who believe, those who believe are justified and declare righteous without cause. Isaiah presents God's invitation to a sinful nature that needed a confess, need to confess of their righteousness can be restored with God. And there was a sinful nature that need to be restored back to God. So Isaiah named some of the things that was going on. And you don't look way back then. Look at the day. Well, what was going on at that time? Why did it need to be restored? Here's some things. Murder. Murder was going on then. Robbery. Bribery. Exploitation. And out of worship. Can you see it today? Can you see those same things today? I can see them today. A person who once was faithful to God had become unfaithful to him. We do not have to look back at that nation to see the unfaithfulness, but look at this nation today. We are doing the same things and have moved away from God's righteousness. Many have allowed circumstances in the world today to cause them to be unfaithful to God. How faithful are you? Great is thy faithfulness. God is grateful to us. We need to come back to God. We have an invitation to come back to God. An invitation to God's righteousness. God is a righteous God. And God wants us to put away those things that are unrighteous and restore our righteousness back with him. Let's look at the last point. An invitation to a willing and obedient nation. God wants to restore relationship with his people. And that is why he said this. If you are willing, glory to God. I, I, I want to restore you now. But if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. Look at the world. Look at what's going on. California has to, they're going to have to stop harvesting certain crops that we love because of the water, the shortage of water. Some countries right now are going to have to ration water. Why? God say, if you come back to me, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the best. We cannot have the best because of who we are and we are a nation need to come back to God. We have an invitation, America. Then it said, but. But. Raise all that if you're not willing. If you're not obedient. But if you resist and rebel. We have a resistant nation. We have a rebellion nation. We are following man and not God. We are following a movement of people and not a movement of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. You will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. 
You will see greater result if you are willing and if you are obedient to God to let us so let us praise the Lord for his goodness praise the Lord for what he has done for us let us be willing have a willingness a desire to participate to help others advance the kingdom of God Remember the words of God that says, come, come now. Stop waiting. Some folks are waiting to the pandemic is over. They'll come back to church. Well, you may not have a chance if you wait on the pandemic. You may be missing the greatest blessing of the Lord by waiting in your bed. Refuse to comb your hair and brush your teeth. Wash your face. Put on some clothes and come to worship God in the sanctuary. God said, forsake not my assembly. God wants you to come now. He said, come now and let us reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they're red as crimson, they shall be like wool. God wants you to come now just as you are. Jesus said in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come in, eat with him, and he with me. So do not wait. It's getting late, folks. The sun is almost down. You don't know when and you don't know where you're going to be when he calls your name. So come, receive the invitation. If you've never been saved, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the time to do it as she sings. If you do not have a church home, now is the time. Jesus went to Calvary just for you. He died just for you. And he rose just for you. Call us. 803-279-8227. Or call a member. Tell a member. You want to become a part of this body of Christ. Will you do it today? Invitation is yours. As she should say. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. voices
Can we sing that one more time? You deserve it. 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 Oh, help me sing. Ah, hallelujah. Lord God, continue to bless us, continue to keep us, continue to protect us as we leave this place, but never from your presence. Now may the sweet grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rest, rule, and abide, hence, for, and now, and forever, evermore. Let us all sing together. Amen. <laughs> 